Hello, my name is Leonardo and I'm from MaximoCon. On this video, I'm gonna show you how to manage asset downtime. And in order to do that, we need to go to the assets application. Although we can also report downtime through the work order, which I'm gonna show you later. I'm using this asset that I created before for another video, which is my centrifugal pump. Currently, I do not have any time reported against it, so I'm just going to create the first record. As you can see here, the asset is up and running without any downtime. Let's say that we want to report downtime that happened in the past a few months ago. Um, for example, two months ago, we have a 24 hour downtime. I can use, as long as I have the downtime code, let's say breakdown for my 24 hour, non-operational. I'm just saying that two months ago, I had a 24 hour breakdown, a non-operational breakdown. But as you can see here, the asset is up and running with 24 hour downtime, which happened two months ago, okay? So let's say that I want to report a uh, downtime that just happened. Right now, I'm going to use the first option, change status, in the same window, of course, the report downtime window. Status date, um, let's say that uh, it was six minutes ago, and uh, the code was um, minor stop, which, of course, it's non-operational. If I click OK, and go down here in my downtime information, I can see that my asset is not running. I still have the same total downtime because this information is the calculation of the sum of the downtime, all right? So let's say now that my asset is back up and running. I will just leave the status date as it is now and click OK. And then I have my asset up and running again with the total downtime of 24 hours and 7 minutes. So this will always sum with the last downtime. You can also manage the downtime history. Let's say that you added a wrong, an incorrect information here in this 24 hour. Let's say that it was, um, I don't know, uh, 23 hours maybe. I can adjust my downtime and I can click OK. It, it takes uh, about 10 seconds to update. Here we go, 23 hours. If I click OK, I've updated my history. As you can see here, the total downtime of 23 hours and 7 minutes. Another option is to report downtime through the work order. But before doing that, I just want to tell you why it's important. If, of course, you don't already know why it's important to use downtime in maximum. Basically, you have two very important, very useful metrics. The mean time between failures and the mean time to repair. By using the downtime report in maximum, you can create KPIs, reports, or even integrate with Cognos this sort of information. This is not out of the box indicators. Of course, you need to create or use a company specialized in Maximum to create it for you. Now, we can easily create and report downtime in our work order here using our Max Demo database. I'm just filling the asset here, nothing else. I can go to the select action and report downtime. 
Um, let's start two minutes ago with total downtime code, all right? Let's say this was a very minor um, downtime. Now it's back two minutes later without downtime code and any other information. Now we can see here in the manage downtime history the information for this particular work order. I cannot see the other records here, but if I want to see all the, the if I want to see all the downtime information, I can just go to the assets application, select action, manage downtime history. Here we have 23 hours, the seven minutes, and then two minutes now from my work order, which I can also change. As you can see here, I can have one start work order and another end work order. I can have one start code and another end code, and the same goes for the start and end operational times. This can be easily managed. This is it for this video. I hope you enjoy it. If you have any questions, please add a comment below. If you like our channel, please subscribe and click on the little bell to receive notifications on future videos. Thank you very much and see you later.